All right, friends, we are here back on the workbench with my 1964 Vox AC30. Last video you guys saw, we fired it up, checked all three channels, and we got sound out of all three, which is just fantastic. No shorts, no uh, obvious issues. We did have a little bit of a thing with the trem channel where we weren't really getting a noticeable trem. We'll circle back to that, but for right now, I want to focus on biasing this thing. So uh, real quick, this is a cathode biased amplifier. It's a bit different than the uh, typical fenders I work on or have shown on the channel. And you bias it via this resistor right here. And in this case, it is a 75 ohm. I don't believe this is original to the amplifier, though it is an old vintage British part from Radio Spares. 75 ohm is um, also, I don't think, the vintage value. However, obviously the wall voltage we see today is quite a bit higher than what this would have been made for, even with the transformer that has multiple taps for different voltages for around the world. So uh, this might be dead on or it might be way off. We won't know until we check it, which is the plan for today. Uh, another note. So when looking at biasing an amplifier like this cathode biased amplifier, you have to look at it differently than what you would with say your typical fender. Um, it's a, uh, you know, I'm certainly not claiming to be an expert in any of this. I'm learning very much as I go here. And there's people much smarter than me or much more experienced than me in this regard. But as I understand it, you know, with the, your, let's say your general typical vintage fender style amplifier, you are biasing it idle and you're shooting for 60, 70 percent, you know, dissipation on the tubes. Um, and that's because as you play the amplifier, uh, that number will go higher. The the tube will um, get pushed harder and thus uh, the, the total dissipation will be higher. And so you don't really want to exceed 100% or so. So that's why you don't bias a fender at 80, 90% because that's an idle. So once you start playing, it's going to jump way above that and um, cook the tubes. With a cathode bias amplifier, you got to look at it kind of in the reverse. So at idle, you want it to be sitting at, you know, 100, 110, 115 um, I would say max percent dissipation because as you play it, the cathode um, bias resistor, it's actually dropping that. So it's actually dropping the dissipation as you play it. That's as I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I know you guys will, but uh, all that to say, we're going to be shooting or having a different target for this amp than we would for the fenders that I, you know, typically uh, work on and have shown on this channel. So, with that in mind, uh, there's also a different method to check uh, the bias on this amplifier. Uh, I use a, you know, a bias probe, which plugs into the power tube sockets on the fenders. It's pretty simple and easy. You can buy those for, you know, 150 bucks or whatever it is. And it's very safe to check the bias that way. Now you can also purchase one with the nine pin, you know, EL84 sockets like this has. However, that's another 150 bucks or whatever. And there are other methods that are very easy. They're just more dangerous. So this is my disclaimer. Do not touch an amplifier if you don't know what you're doing. Now, uh, you can certainly learn what you're doing. I am uh, proof absolutely that, you know, I came from knowing nothing and here I am. But I took my time. I watched a ton of videos. You know, I learned and really was very careful. And I just want to encourage anybody that is seeing my videos and might be inspired to try this on their own. Please, please, please you know, do the research and really try and make sure um, you have some idea of how to do it safely. And the biggest thing, obviously, I've shown in multiple videos, discharging the caps, making sure there's no voltage sitting in the amplifier waiting to shock you, so on and so forth. So this uh, method, you're going to be doing it with the amp live, and I am going to be, you know, more or less poking and prodding in here, which obviously makes it very dangerous because you're going to have, you know, 300 plus volts um, coursing through many of these nodes here and you don't want to touch that for obvious reasons. So I'm going to be showing you guys how, uh, how I know how to do it. Thanks to, um, you know, my, my good buddy, um, uh, Lyle over at Psionic Audio, who's been very, very kind and, and really been helpful in, in mentoring me as I kind of learn the ropes here. So this is a method he, he showed me how to do, and I will also show the uh, calculator, that allows you to kind of easily run those numbers yourself. And yeah, okay, all of that out of the way. I do have the tubes in it, obviously, to be able to do this. So, and then I do have a um, the cab plugged in. So just cover my bases here. Now we're gonna go ahead and first and foremost, make sure that all of the uh, volumes on the amplifier are turned all the way off. So let's go ahead and do that. 
All right, and you might go, Tanner, why'd you do that? Well, if you're running any signal through the amplifier when it's cathode bias like this, and uh, you're trying to check the bias, any of that signal is going to uh, affect the bias because remember, at idle with no signal through it, that's gonna be the very max dissipation. And so we wanna set that to a number so that you know when it does get signal and in input into the amplifier, that number will be going down as it's reacting. And this is you know coming into play. So that's why you wanna make sure you have that uh, everything turned down. And it's also important to let the tubes warm up so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I've got it plugged into the uh, Variac off screen here, and we're gonna go ahead and turn it on, slowly bring up the voltage. And I'm gonna check the bias at, uh, I think, at least two different uh, voltages. We're gonna start lower, and I'm gonna kinda of use the heaters, the uh, this blue and yellow wire you see everywhere. Uh, those are the heaters to the tubes, so those are kind of what um, provide them uh, the power to light the filaments, um, as I understand it. And you want those to be, you know, the goal to target the perfect number is 6.3 volts AC on those. Uh, now, as far as I understand, what I've seen in my research, there's a tolerance level there, and you can go, you know, plus or minus, say, 10% uh, on those. That might not be the exact number, but there, there is a, a tolerance level there. So we want to make sure that, you know, ultimately, we want to check at 120 volts. Are we within a, to a healthy tolerance level for the heaters, which will just kind of make sure the tubes um, don't die prematurely. And uh, we will ideally, hopefully, see that's the case and then bias it based off of 120 volts. But I think I might check it also at a, a lower voltage, like a 110, 118, 115, somewhere in that range. But I will uh, probably just go wherever there's 6.3 volts first, and then from there we'll go up to 120, assuming 120 will not stop at 6.3 volts on the heaters here. Okay, I think I've covered everything there, so let's go ahead and fire it up. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna let it sit for a while and kind of warm up, and then I will uh, bring you guys back in. Okay, so I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see the multimeter here, but I've got the black lead already connected to the yellow um, line of the heaters. It's just on the other side because it's an easier point for the little gripper to get onto. And then this side, I'll go over to the blue here. And uh, this is, again, you want to check the heaters with AC voltage, not DC. And in the pocket method, of course. So at 110 volts out of the wall, we're looking at 6.19 volts. So again, the quote-unquote perfect target is 6.3 volts. So we're very close. We're going to go ahead and bump it up a little bit until we get to 6.3. So this is 112 from the wall. Let's try that. That looks just about dead on. So 112 at the wall, that gives us uh, basically the quote unquote, again, perfect heater voltage. So we're gonna go ahead and check the bias at 112 and then we'll check it again at 120. So how do we check the bias on a cathode biased amplifier such as this? So there are uh, a few things that we need to know. And then from there, we can input them into the two bias calculator you guys have seen this before. Uh, this is from the Rob Robinette website. I can put this in the description, uh, but it's very easy to find, tube bias calculator. So the first thing we need to know is what is the tube type? So annoyingly, they don't have EL84s in here, but 6BQ5, 12 watt is the correct uh, tube for if you have EL84 tubes like this amplifier does. So then the first thing we wanna get is plate to cathode voltage. So your plate is going to be pin seven, and uh, so we're going to go pin seven off of one of these power tubes, and then we're going to go to the cathode. And uh, in this case, we have this bus wire, which we'll, um, we'll be able to easily grip onto for the cathode side of that voltage. So we'll go ahead and put this on, and we're in DC volts now. So we've got that connected there. And again, we've let the amplifier heat up, and all of the volume controls are off so that that is not um, affecting anything. Try and position this so you guys can see. Okay, so we're connected to the bus wire right here, which will be our cathode. And then we wanna go over to pin seven and take this voltage in. Again, this is where it gets very dangerous because we are now you know, um, dealing with, this will be over 300 volts for sure. So we'll go ahead and this, this uh, tube is the most accessible. So we'll go ahead and find pin seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Another way to do it is we'll look at your output transformer, which this is right here, and follow those leads and you'll have connections from the output transformer uh, to pin seven on your power tubes. So this is our target. Let's see what this gives us. I'll try not to block with my hand. So we're looking at 300 and 302 volts. So we're gonna go ahead and input that into the calculator. 302. So next we want to go ahead and pull up the calculator, scroll down, and we're gonna be looking at tube dissipation using cathode resistor voltage drop. So first we wanna enter is the number of tubes that share that cathode resistor. It's four tubes, one cathode resistor. So input four there. And then we wanna get the voltage across the cathode resistor. So again, we'll be in DC volts here. And we're going to grab this. And here's our cathode resistor. So we're going to want to put this on one end, like so. And then put this end on the other side and measure the uh, volts across the resistor. This should be 10, 11 volts, somewhere in that range. Ten point four one. Okay, so we've got that inputted, and now we want to do the cathode resistor. So it's seventy-five ohm, but we're not going to trust that. We're going to measure the ohms on the resistor itself, what it actually measures. I'm running voltage through it. Is that what's throwing everything off? I can't say I've ever tried to read a resistor with voltage going through it. So that might be the issue here. So I just turned off the variac. Let's go back to our multimeter that I've been using for the past while. It's not failed me yet. Go back into ohms here. There we go. Okay, that was the issue. That's a another just rookie mistake, I'm sure. Uh, like I said, I've never actually tried to measure resistor with the amplifier on. And uh, yeah, that's I will never forget that now. <laughs> that's how things work for me. So this is supposed to be a 75 ohm resistor is measuring 72.9. So we'll go ahead and input it in here. So right here, we'll want to put in 72. 9, or now it's saying, yeah, 72.973. So now we can go ahead and hit calculate. And that tells us we are at 85% plate dissipation per tube. And again, with the cathode bias amplifier, we want to shoot for 100 because this is the, the maximum at idle. That is the maximum number it's going to be. And 10.2 uh, watts when it should be 12 watts. So we are a good bit under. Now, um, if we are running the amplifier at, you know, 100 and what I say this was 112 volts uh, with the brown box or whatever, then we would absolutely want to change this resistor because it is too cold. But now I want to go ahead and check with it at 120 volts. We'll check the heaters first, see if it's within range, if it's even possible to run at 120, and then we'll check the bias there. But now we have the cathode resistor value. So uh, we can turn the amplifier back on and we don't have to measure that again because that is a constant. So we're gonna take that off here and let's flip the Variac back on and we will measure uh, the heaters first at uh, 120 and we'll see what that gives us. So we're back in AC volts here. Again, the black lead on the multimeter is going over to the yellow side of the heater. Now we'll connect this to the blue side. We're at 112 volts. This was about 6.3 when we checked first. So let's check it again. Yep, 6.31. So let's go ahead and bring it up to, uh, let's try 118 first. All right, 118 volts. Let's check that. 6.6 volts. So that's still totally fine within tolerance for sure. Let's go up to 120. All right, we're at 120 volts now. Let's check that. 
6.78. So let's do the quick math on that. 6.78 divided by 6.3, and that puts us at 7%. So it's 7% more. I think it's within 10% is, is uh, you know, kind of standard for, for tubes to be built to, to run off of within 10% tolerance. Um, I believe that's the case. I've looked it up before, and I might be misremembering, but 7% is not that extreme to me. You know, I imagine... Uh, the tolerance has to be more than 5%. And so it's probably in the 5 to 10% range. So I'm actually okay with that. I feel pretty confident and comfortable. I think the tubes are not going to, you know, die immediately because they are 7% and um, the filaments are 7% over what uh, the ideal is. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and move forward um, under that assumption and go ahead and check the bias. So we need to check the plate to cathode voltage again, and then the voltage across the bias resistor. So let's do that real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and hit calculate on it and show you guys what that looks like. So with 323.4 for the plate to cathode voltage, for four tubes, the uh, voltage across the cathode resistor, 11.34. The cathode resistor is 72.9 ohms. That gives us 99.2% plate dissipation per tube which is nearly right on the money for 100%. Now, people, I think, generally go above 100%, but uh, yeah, that's just about right on for 100%. And uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty solid. So that's 11.9 uh, watts, where these are 12-watt tubes. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Now, I do think I will experiment with some other resistor values, maybe just to bias it a little bit hotter, because that is kind of part of the you know, the vintage Vox AC30, not even necessarily vintage. I think uh, just in general, Vox AC30s, they tend to be biased quite hot. So I think I will experiment with a different value. And basically what I would be doing is going less, so less resistance. So 50 ohm, 60 something ohm, whatever is available in a, you know, fairly large resistor. Those need to be, I don't know, 10 watts or something. So uh, I will have to order some because I don't have any on hand, but this is uh, perfectly fine to at least run for now, and it's not, you know, super, super um, cold biased at 120 volts. So I'm actually happy those numbers worked out better, honestly, than I was expecting. So we'll call that a win. All right. Uh, we don't have to do anything, and we can go ahead and test it, which is awesome. I'm going to play around with the vibrato channel a little bit and clue you guys in if I find anything. But uh, yeah, otherwise, we're ready to do a plane demo. So excited. Can't wait to show you guys. I can't wait to hear for myself, actually. <laughs> we'll see how it sounds. Hopefully, hopefully it sounds pretty good mic'd up. I know uh, it's got to be pretty loud and, and it can be difficult. So anyways, let's go ahead and either jump to me showing you guys what I did to fix the trim or straight to playing. All right. I want to show you guys real quick. Um, I'm not sure if I had shown this with the AC30 yet, but this is basically how I make sure that the amp is safe to work on. Again, you know, using this uh, tool, it's basically a couple of resistors in series, and you're running from the filter cap node to ground via this connection right here to the chassis. And it's just dumping the voltage that's left over in the caps to ground, and it will siphon all of the caps in this uh, circuit at least. You know, with the, some fender amps, you actually need to make sure that standby is off when you do this. Otherwise, the caps in the doghouse will not be drained, uh, which I, I've shown previously. So basically, you'll do that and then pull out your multimeter and just kind of confirm the voltage. You want to be, again, in DC volts. Connect this to ground. I left this little pin right here that I'm not using because it's an easy access point for a ground connection. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and check the other node, see what that's giving us. My hand's blocking it, I think. Try that. So we're down to under a volt. So uh, we know this amplifier is safe. We can check other spots. So here's another filter cap, for example. The positive side, we can check that and see if uh, that's also drained. And it is under 0.4 of a volt. So yep, we can uh, check any of the filter caps at this point. And they're all will show they're drained uh, the same because they're all connected. So you just need to set this on one of the main filter caps in the amplifier 
and it will drain them all. It just might take some time and it's really entirely dependent on the resistors in um, that you're using. You can make one of these yourself at home. I can put a link in the description where I bought this. Just makes it simple and easy. If you were to dump all the voltage to ground immediately, you could do that. It would probably damage the caps and you would get a large spark uh, as a result. So, all right. Uh, that's just my little, <laughs> little behind the scenes tip there. So we'll check the uh, tramp circuit and go from there. So let's go ahead and close up this side because none of this would be um, anything that would cause the tram channel to not work. Uh, this is connected to the trim channel, but it's a brand new cap. The resistor measures fine, so it's not going to be anything here. So we can go ahead and close this side of the amplifier up with the plate here. And I did get some new hardware because it did not come with the original hardware here, and I just went with these massive fender washers so that uh, there's plenty of, um, you know, there's there's plenty of contact with the wood so it's not all going in the middle and you can see it's actually indented the wood a little bit here and here because they use too small of a washer there so I just went with something nice and large so it spreads the load here so that's the same on all of these top ones here these three and then for the bottom two I uh, got smaller washers, which are still large, but they are a bit smaller, and that's because uh, there's not enough room to use these big washers because it ends right here, and this goes up against the back of the head cab. So now let's go ahead and flip the chassis over, and I'm going to start uh, looking around and see if I notice anything, probably clean the tube sockets and do some other stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with all those details, but I'll probably bring you back in if I find anything. There's one peculiarity I wanted to point out on this that I don't really think much of because uh, I've heard of power transformers making some some kind of humming, buzzing noise. But uh, yeah, it's more than I would expect. I've never actually heard it like this before. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd just quickly show you guys what that sounds like and maybe you experts can tell me what you think. It uh, seems to perform fine. The voltages all seem fine as far as I can tell and the sound is great. So I think think it's okay but um, and I also checked the mounting tabs here check the screws to make sure they're tight they are so there's no vibration there it doesn't feel like it's vibrating when I touch it but it does make a noise so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and I'll stick the mic uh, right up in front of it so you guys can hear what I'm talking about I might gain up the mic here so you guys can hear better It's definitely coming from the power transformer, but I don't feel any vibration when I touch it. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but it, when I put my ear next to it, it really sounds like it's a power transformer. And with the ch bottom of the chassis open, uh, I couldn't identify anything in there either that caused the issue or, or sounded like anything. I changed the uh, rectifier tube to see if that caused anything just out of curiosity, because it sounds like it's right in this area and it made no difference. So it is the power transformer as far as I can tell. Yeah, I don't know. It's new to me, but uh, and it is a replacement power transformer, as mentioned before, but it is a vintage power transformer from an AC30, just not a um, not a 64 uh, or so like this would be. It was from a uh, roughly 1970 Vox AC30. Okay, with that, we're going to now move forward.